Hi, hope you've been liking our content. We are here today to discuss about planning your capital raise for the seed and early stages. My name is Yas Chankritan. I'm a principal at Jungle Ventures and glad to share our insights with you given our investments in more than 30 companies at the early stage. The first thing which you want to keep in mind is preparing at least 18 months of a plan for hiring and onboarding. You want to prepare this plan focusing just on the costs of people and the onboarding expenses and not as much on the revenues coming through. This is to keep a conservative stance so that even if there are any delays on the revenues, you can still onboard the people you need to build the best version of your product in the early stages. The second key point you want to be careful of, which often founders miss, are the legal, regulatory, as well as transaction closing related expenses. What I mean by this is, because these are expenses which are not part of your business flow, but are required for your company to be incorporated, for you to raise capital, for you to have the right entity structure set up and the licenses which you require, this may skip your mind in the day-to-day -day operations, but these can be upfront and chunky expenses and you want to be careful about them. The third key point would be other business-related upfront expenses which may not scale linearly. Great examples of these are leases, rents, warehouses, infrastructure capex, as well as cloud hosting costs. Over time, AWS and the likes have provided linearly scaling cloud hosting costs, but you still may need some specialized software licenses or some specialized hardware or capex, which may require an upfront payment. This can sometimes throw your cash planning quite off balance because it may run into tens of thousands of dollars, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars, and therefore can get in the way of the hiring plans as well as other growth plans of the business. The fourth point which you want to keep in mind is always doing a sensibility check of your business plan using unit economics. What I mean by that is we've sometimes seen founders projecting their revenue growths as well as their gross profit margin growths on a linear basis while assuming the same is executed only by a small team which they have initially hired. While this may be the case, this is an assumption which can often go wrong for multiple reasons. Your revenues may start later, your revenue flow might be slower or smaller than imagined, your gross profit margins may be lesser because your initial customers either ask for a discount or you give them discounts in order to get the business flowing. And for all of those reasons, the profit which you thought would come in to subsidize the cash burn of the business may end up being much smaller or delayed. And therefore, always do a unit economics check either on a loss per item sold or cost per item sold basis so that as you expect to hit a 10,000 or 100,000 item sold by month 12 or month 18, you can do a quick back calculation that if I'm losing two to three dollars, then I should be ready to have at least 200 to 300,000 dollars available for that month's growth to be achieved. This again is a conservative measure. If your plan is rolling in a better way than you had imagined, you'll end up saving on these expenses and that's always a good situation to be in. But if the converse is true, you don't want to run out of capital before you are able to reach a meaningful enough scale to approach your next round of funding. And finally, always, always keep at least a 25% buffer on whatever are the aggregate expenses you've been able to calculate for an 18 month runway. This is important, especially as we can see in a COVID scenario, when things often don't go per plan, completely in reasons outside of your control and outside of your investor's control. So it is always good to at least have a decent buffer. In case you don't need the buffer, you can always become more aggressive in your growth and spending. In case you do need the buffer, at least as you go into the buffer zone, you can start planning for contingencies and how to raise more capital quickly on a going forward basis. In summary, Start by preparing at least an 18-month hiring and onboarding plan. Be careful of closing expenses related to licenses, regulatory, as well as transaction costs. Be completely aware of any upfront expenses required for the business, which may be chunky big amounts, especially rents, leases, capex, as well as cloud hosting costs. Finally, do a unit economic sensibility check so that you are not assuming your revenues continue to subsidize your business growth, which may or may not happen, you do assume that there'll be a certain scaling and linearly growing expense related to business growth, at least in the early days, until your business reaches a certain stability and definitely add in a 25% buffer. We hope this content was useful. Please do like and subscribe. We are posting useful content like this for early stage founders on a weekly basis. Thank you and speak to you soon.